Gingrich's early interest in primitive land mammals eventually took him to Pakistan. It was there that he made the kind of find most paleontologists only dream about. A fossil that would rewrite one of evolution's greatest stories. I found the back of a skull that I couldn't identify. It had a very good, well-preserved ear region, and that offered the clue to what it was. The shape was familiar, but in other ways, it was like nothing Gingrich had ever seen. This is the original specimen. It's the one we found in about 1978. There are several things that strike you. One is it's very similar in size and shape to the back of a skull of a wolf. But there was something odd about this skull. On its underside was a walnut-sized bump. If this wasn't here, I would think that this was an archaic carnivorous mammal, what we call a creodont. But it is here. It was part of the animal's inner ear, and it had a distinctive shape. A shape found today in only one kind of animal. Whales. What was the ear of a whale doing on the skull of an animal that resembled a wolf? Gingrich was intrigued. So he constructed a model of what the creature's full skull might have looked like. He wondered, was his find a crucial missing link? The first fossil evidence ever found for one of Darwin's most daring claims, that whales had evolved from land mammals. To know for sure, Gingrich would need to find more fossils ones that would show each stage of the whale transformation, what scientists call transitional forms. I want to line them all up. I want anyone to be able to see it and believe it because they've seen it. Basilosaurus, a 40 million year old creature already known to science. Basilosaurus lived full time in the water. If whales had evolved from land mammals, they had done so long before Basilosaurus. So Gingrich didn't think the bones would be of much interest. But he couldn't have been more wrong. After only a few days of digging, he made his second amazing find. It turned out that Basilosaurus had something modern whales have long since lost. For the first time, we've got whales that have legs. The bones were small, but unmistakable. A pelvis. A kneecap. Even toes. This whale had a complete set of leg bones. Gingrich brought back as much of the skeleton as he could carry. It was dramatic evidence that whales had once been four-legged animals. Since Gingrich's finds, he and others have filled in more of this fantastic story. Scientists now think that the earliest ancestor of whales was similar to this 50 million year old wolf-like mammal called Synonyx. Synonyx was a predatory scavenger that lived and hunted along the shores of an ancient sea. Perhaps its descendants found the water a source of abundant food and a haven from competition. Over millions of years, Front legs became fins, rear legs disappeared, bodies lost fur, and took on their familiar streamlined shape. Since Gingrich's first find, named Pachycetus, the list of known transitional whales has grown. It now includes Ambulocetus, Rhodocetus, Duridon, as well as Basilosaurus. 
they reveal another element of whale evolution, the gradual migration of nostrils to the top of the head as whales adapted to breathing in the water. How did whales lose their legs? As the years went by, they evolved into newer types of... Gingrich's work demonstrates what Darwin himself insisted, that the evidence for evolution is all around us if we choose to look for it. And bones aren't the only evidence of whale evolution. Their ancestry is also visible in the way they move. Frank Fish studies how today's marine mammals swim. He looks for their evolutionary heritage in the way they move through the water. The big question is, how do you go from a terrestrial mammal that ran around on all four legs to something such as a dolphin, which now doesn't have any legs at all and is well adapted to swimming in the oceans? Even though whales look like fish, they don't swim like them. Fish swim by flexing their spines from side to side, like the shark. But mammals swim differently. This otter swims by undulating its spine up and down, in exactly the same way that whales do. And, as it turns out, in the same way that land mammals use their spines when running. Whales took with them into the water their ancestral way of moving, and we can still see it 50 million years later.